What's up? What's up, everyone? Welcome. It's your favorite health and fitness coach and the ultimate boss up babe. That's me, Carissa Atkins, and you are listening to Boss Up Babe podcast. I am all about bringing you not just tangible tips and expert coaching advice, but also amazing interviews of of professional women who have literally walked the walk that you've been on. Um, They talk the talk, and I have an amazing boss up babe with me on today's show. Um, Today, I have the boss up babe, Dr. Lisa Petty. Now, Lisa started her career as a holistic nutritionist and health researcher and quickly became recognized internationally as a speaker, as a journalist, as an award-winning author and a media health expert. Now, after several years of working with women who really struggled to follow through with their own health goals, Lisa, of course, returned back to the university to study social and cultural influences on health behavior. She earned her PhD in her research on how midlife women experience self-care in the face of social pressures on them to be perfect in every facet of their lives. I don't know about you, but I can definitely, you know, resi- that resonates with me because I really, there are times in my life where I felt that everything had to be perfect in order to move on this image, everything, business, everything. So I'm really excited um, to be able to pick her brain today. Now, Lisa helps midlife women navigate this rude awakening that happens at midlife so that we can, so that, you know, y'all can really create the life that you really want to live. So with that, Lisa, welcome to the Boss of Babe show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here and chat with you today. Yeah, oh my God, I'm stoked. I'm so glad that our paths crossed a few months ago, and I'm so honored to be able to interview uh, you on on this radio show. Um, so I, I do want to welcome you. It means a lot to, to bring such amazing women onto the show. And today we are talking all things midlife. So if that's you, if you're listening, let's like tune up the volume, right? Because we are going to really specifically talk about how you can create that magic from this rude awakening of what, you know, we call midlife. So Lisa, I just, I got to dive right in because my, you know, my radio show, we're 30 minutes and that goes by so fast. Um, And so I just want to, I want you to tell me a little bit about what it is that you do. Like, how do you really help women navigate their midlife and really turn that into magic? Uh, great question. Um, so unfortunately at midlife, a lot of, as you call like rude awakenings happen, our bodies start to, you know, act like strangers. We could, you know, not change our diet, not change our exercise. And suddenly, you know, the genes that we put on one day, um, don't fit us the next day. And so we we're, you know, trying to figure out our bodies. We can't sleep. We're maybe a little bit too irritable right? Um, We really just have no sense of who we are. And then at the same time that that is happening, we start, you know, relationships can be changing. So if you have children young, they might be starting to leave the nest. Or if you had children a little bit older, you're going through the transition to perimenopause while you've got little people uh, still, you know, demanding ongoing attention from you. So that can be a stress. And then at the same time that this is happening, uh, as we get into midlife, which is, you know, 40, 40 ish, it starts to happen and it does coincide with perimenopause, by the way, you know, while while everything is falling apart, uh, we start hearing these stirrings, like, what am I doing? What, why am I here? You know, I've accomplished so much of what I wanted to accomplish in my life. Is that all there is for me? What am I supposed to do next? So I help women get through that process. We look at all of the physical issues and we get clarity there. We address those mind blocks and we get clarity there about, you know, the relationships and how they're changing. And as you mentioned, the expectations on women to, to do it all and to do it all perfectly. And then we, we work on finding out what that little voice is trying to tell us for the next phase in our lives. 
So good. And I honestly, I just attended a conference where the ladies talked about three phases that we as women go through. It's like 20s and then the 40s and then the 60s. And it's crazy because you mentioned that at the at the 30s, 40s and 50s range. It's like, oh, well, now what? We've raised children. We have have successful careers. Like, what is my purpose? And they always, we struggle with identity, I think. Um, Absolutely. Like, who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Yeah. Yes. If, my kids are gone. Um, so good. And, and the work is so needed. You know, I help a lot of, I help women all ages, right? I see them in their twenties or thirties, forties, fifties, and sixties. And, um, they, they all strive for this like sense of purpose. And that's what, you know, I love about coaching. Um, but you specifically, you help them navigate through that and help them what I like to say, boss up and become a, the best versions of themselves. Like, women who may have not even probably thought of what they wanted to do and you help them tap into that power and they're like, oh, this feels really good. And that's a good point because as women are growing up, particularly women who, who grew up in the 70s, 80s and, and early 90s, we had these, this door opening, you could have it all, mm -hmm. right? And, and it's meant to be freedom, right? You can create whatever you want to create, but instead of being one door, it ended up, I like to see it like this hallway of all these doors that are opening up and we're supposed to go through all of them. Mm. Like that's ridiculous. And, and I think a lot of women of this age, we did those things because these doors were open to us without really um, questioning whether we wanted to, mm -hmm. whether it was something that, you know, was important to us. And so when we get to midlife and some of those doors, you know, you've, you've got your partner, you've got your home, you've got your career, your children are here or not, whether you had children, that phase of your life is coming to an end. Mm -hmm. I, it's an opportunity for women to uh, consciously and proactively create exactly what they want without a whole bunch of social pressure involved. Mm. I love that. What a great analogy. I literally imagined every door opening in my life at a certain time where I was like, how am I going to do it all? And I'll just plow through and hustle through and who cares about me, right? Who cares? I'll just get, get to me later on uh, in life. So good. Right. Um, I want to just kind of talk a little bit about, you know, your own boss up story. I, every scene, every guest, every interviewer um, seems to always have this, this story, this moment where they literally had to boss up and become either something else or stay stuck. And I find mm. that most of the time when women go through this boss up moment, they figure out, you know, their purpose, their power, which is sounds like what you've done. Mm -hmm. um, so tell me about a time in your life where you had to boss up and, and what was that experience like for you? So it, it, Interesting. So as you mentioned uh, in my in my introduction there, I started in uh, the well-being industry as a holistic nutritionist. And so I had clients and I was always interested in working with women and they always tend to be the same age that I am. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm working with these women and I would you know, we'd make a plan about some kind of nutrition change we were going to make dietary change we we're going to make and we would get together and I'd say so let's say the example drink more water. And so we'd get together and I'd say, so how did it go with that plan to drink more water? And the women would be like, eh, uh, I didn't do it. Yeah. So I'd be like, okay, okay, I know that. Life can get rough. Let's put that back on the agenda for next time. And so we'll follow up next time. And then how did that go? Oh yeah, I didn't do it. Yeah. So as a, you know, as a helping professional, I was like, what am I doing wrong? Like, why can't, why can't I get the women to do the things they say they want to do? So at the same time that this was going on in my professional sphere, my little baby was choosing universities and he made it very clear that he would not go to the local university. It was going to be, I am out. I am out of here because I am the woman from, you know, the mom that nobody wants to be around. Right. <laughs> so he's making this plan. I'm out of here. I'm going. And I'm suddenly, you know, it's whenever they do that January of the year, my, my career is just like, what's happening? And my, my baby is just about, I've done my job and he's leaving. And I'm looking at my home going, oh my God, this is it. There's this empty house and me. And who am I now? Who am I when my baby goes? And I'm not mom all the time. I'm not, you know, even my love language is service. So even cooking dinner and doing the laundry and all of that, taking those things out of my day I'm like, oh my God, I don't even know who I am. I don't even know who I am. So for me, that was the catalyst to my, 
you know, I don't like to call it a midlife crisis because it wasn't, it was the catalyst for me to start thinking about me and what does Lisa want to do next? And so I decided, uh, and I was hosting a radio show at the time and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna pitch the whole thing and I'm <laughs> going to go to university and I'm gonna figure out this behavior change stuff and why women don't do the things they say they want to do, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah. uh, that was the big thing for me and of course, hitting in perimenopause and watching my own body change. It started me on this journey. And, uh, you know, I call myself a midlife alchemist because I got through it. I learned from it. I learned all the tricks, all the magic, all the tips. And, uh, you know, I, that's what I share with women now so they can get through this because midlife women are so powerful. Mm. We really are so powerful. And right now I really believe that it's women that are going to save the world. That it's only women who are on purpose, mm -hmm. right? And, th and that doesn't mean a job. It doesn't mean a career. It doesn't mean starting a business. It just means following uh, your, your path. And, yeah. when, and when women do that, I think we're going to do just fine. I know, right? I'm reading a book. It's called um, How to Be a Monk by Jay Shetty. And he mentions this, find your dharma, right? Like your passion, your purpose. And I feel very blessed. I, I had that awakening that a lot of women get. Um, just a couple of years ago, found my path, found my, you know, my passion. I'm like, oh my gosh, I could make an impact on a global level. Um, so I know that you are trying to make an impact on a global level. Tell me a little bit quickly about that. Well, okay. So because I have this really, um, this love for midlife women, just this total respect, just understanding the power that we have, that we had scattered, right? It had scattered in so many directions and we get to pull it back in now and we get to have it for ourselves. And I know that when women have control of this, as I said, we have the power to fix this, this yeah. uneven um, energetic thing that we're going through in the world. And my personal goal is to help 10,000 women get from um, chaos and confusion that they might be experiencing to that profound confidence and clarity about who they are and um, what they're going to do next. Well, you all just, you, did you hear that? 10,000 women. If that's you and you're like, I need clarity and I need purpose and I like, I'm going through exactly what Lisa's talking about, then I would highly encourage you to reach out to her and just, you know, like talk to her, right? She's such an amazing, amazing woman. She's, she's been through so much um, and, and she's teaching so much, right? She's using her power and her, you know, what she loves to do to help other women and hell, she's even got a 10K goal. And I know if we come together all across the globe, we'll, we'll be able to help you uh, accomplish that goal. No problem. I'm sure. And can I just say in order to, <laughs> if, if you're interested, ladies, if you're listening and you're going, mm, what does that even mean? I invite you to go to my website, lisapetty.com. And I have a free masterclass available right there on my website, the three steps from chaos to clarity. Mm. And I promise you, you have a listen to that. You're going to be well on your way. Magic, magic training, free masterclass. Y'all, you cannot you cannot not take you know advantage of stuff like that. I mean, you have so much knowledge and expertise. So for the fact that you're giving that away, um, you know, as a gift, remind our audience again what what website? It's lisapetty.com. P-E-T-T-Y, like Tom Petty. Uh, no relation, unless it gets me free tickets to something. But anyway, um, yeah, lisapetty.com. Perfect. And I'll of course put that in the show notes after all of this um, for you guys to find. So. We hear of rude awakenings, right? We've had like off air conversations. Tell me about what a rude awakening is and why is it a gift? How can women turn this oh crap moment <laughs> into our gift? Okay, so again, we go back to that sense of, of chaos that we start to feel at midlife, right? And usually it's, we come to notice it first physically. So we notice that we're not sleeping well anymore. We notice that we're gaining weight, particularly around the abdomen. We notice we might be irritable and not a lot of fun to be around. Um, we might notice, um, you know, maybe you can get to sleep at night, but then you wake up at three o'clock in the morning or whatever it is. Now, now you wake up and you're exhausted and you're cranky and you, you can, you know, 
the idea of exercise is right out the window because you're magnetically attracted to your couch, right? Like you, there's, you're just not who you were anymore. Mm -hmm. And again, these, these stirrings, this, what am I doing? What's happening next? This confusion, it's all sort of floating around. And um, what's amazing to me is again, it started with that, that physical discomfort. You, you, it got your attention, right? You're not, you can't be complacent when you can't do up your jeans, when you have not changed your diet and you haven't changed your exercise, but suddenly your pants don't do up. You can't ignore that, right? You can't ignore it when you used to sleep beautifully and you don't anymore. Um, you can't, you can't, like, you can't ignore these things. So instead of, uh, I see a lot of women going into the, in the trap of, oh, this, this is painful. This is terrible. Why do we have to go through this? You know, this is so cruel. Yeah, it's, it's uncomfortable, but it's an opportunity for you to put yourself first. Finally, for the first time in maybe 20 or 30 years, you have a good excuse to pay attention to yourself, right? <laughs> you, you, can, you can get the, you know, go to a naturopathic doctor, get your hormones checked. Uh, we offer that in our midlife life alchemy program. It's so important to understand, you know, we call it the mess test. We made that word up. It's got a really scientific name, but we look at your hormones related to mood, energy, sleep, mm -hmm. and the steroid hormones, the stress hormones and sex hormones. You have to know what's going on there. Um, and then, you know, when you feed your body properly, you feed those neuro neurotransmitters properly, you'll get the better sleep. You'll wake up with energy. You'll be a nice person if that's what you want to be, right? Like, um, but you wouldn't have done it. You would have kept on going down that same old path of giving it all away to everybody else and not taking anything for yourself if you didn't have that wake up call, right? If you yeah. didn't have suddenly, I can't ignore me anymore because I can't afford to buy a brand new wardrobe. Right. 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 Like right. I have to pay attention to me. And so it is a rude awakening because everything's changing. The kids are leaving the, or staying. The spouse is leaving the job, particularly right now, weird situation. People are losing jobs, changing jobs, all kinds of things going on. Instead of freaking out, instead of getting caught up in the, the energy of all that change, take a moment, get mindful. And look for the magic, look for the gift in there because it's in there. And uh, with a little bit of help, a little bit of guidance, amazing what you can do with it. So many interesting things that I could go into <laughs> in that specifically, because I too, right? When I, when you work with predominantly women, I help them lose weight, double their energy, feel sexy and confident in their bodies. Um, but sometimes like I, they always have a rude awakening most of the time. I mean, even I did at 213 pounds, right? When the doctor gave me some hard to hear truth, I'm like, what? Yeah. You know, and then, and then to see myself as, as my mom, who was always obese, like just kind of like fast, which made me fast forward the years. I'm like, if I don't change, I'm yeah. going to be that. And I love her, but I don't want, I need more from right. me, right? I need to do right. something. And so this rude awakening happens. You help them navigate that. You help them turn that into their power. But yeah. the biggest thing, and I, and I see this all the time as a coach and as a speaker, and just as someone who literally loves like talking to women and collaborating okay. with them, they all tend to put themselves on the back burner, right? Yeah. So what is, and you've been, like, I find it fascinating that you can even like get college and schooling around this because <laughs> most women are like, huh, I'll get to me later. And then they never do. I'm like, yeah. this is just never going to happen unless you make yourself a priority. But why? Why do you think women don't focus in on themselves? It, it fires me up, but I'm like, why do you think it? So again, when you were reading my bio, it, it sounds really, I don't know, dry and dusty when you say social cultural influences yeah. of a health behavior, blah, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> but that's what the degree says. So that's what we have to say. But really what it did was it looked at the relationship between self-care and well-being for women and what gets in the way of that. And so uh, every time you, you try to learn something, it's about you, right? It's, it's always about you. So I'm a generation Xer. The other thing about when you're doing your doctorate, nobody else is supposed to have ever done it before. So as someone who's in generation X, I'm looking at the research available on well-being for women and there is nothing. It's like there were the baby boomers, the ends. Like, well, <laughs> I had a different experience than the baby boomers, right? 
and and everyone after the baby boomers each generation has a different experience so i focus primarily on the generation x because that's me mm -hmm. and we were raised as we talked about earlier with that mantra you can have it all mm. now what one of the women in my research said and it's, it's it's so beautiful she said that really means you can do it all and so again when you have that expectation it's an expectation it's not a choice that you can have it all you've got all of these things pulling at you right you have to be the best and there's no mediocre right? right you have to be the best partner you have to yeah. be the best mother it's called in research it's called intensive mothering there's a name for it this i i have to be at every soccer game i have to the kids have to be in the best clothes you know i have to be visible and seen i have to bake cookies whatever you have to be the best at it and you have to be the best friend and you have to be the best employee and god forbid you're at work and your kid gets sick because then everybody looks at you like oh yeah i guess you gotta go right or you know then then you take work at home at night to make up with the fact that you were pulled out of your day and you get home and you're doing that and you know your partner and your kids are like aren't you going to pay attention to me mm -hmm. right like we just we never get that time unless we're intentional and we carve it out for ourselves right yeah. unless we say if you see me with my cup of tea and my journal you don't even talk to me unless you're on fire right like yeah we have to be able to carve out that time but, but we're not our society is built in such a way you can call it the patriarchy whatever you want to call it that sense of women are subservient we must serve and we must serve everyone else and there's another problem that comes up too when you talk about self-care is that um, women are judged if they engage in self-care because that means they're being selfish and they put themselves in front of their partner, their family, their mom, whatever. Mm -hmm. But here's the new one. We're judged now if we don't engage in self-care. So mm -hmm. if we are not eating organic all the time and if we are not going to the gym seven days a week and if we are not X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. So, you know, either way, we can't win which is right? bs <laughs> i'm is. like i gotta call the bs card right um, yes i think we can right and i heard a lot of things in there is i always want to say yeah you can have it all i'm like i am healthy i am an amazing mother so to me i'm like quit thinking about everyone thinks about you it's none of our business anyways and how about you just like do you be you and everything else will work itself out Oh, I just, yeah, I'm glad that like you brought that up because it's like, you know, maybe if that was your mantra then, but we all bit off way too much that we couldn't, you know, chew everything. And now we're like, whoa. Um, so I just want to be, because I even was writing questions and I know we're not going to get to them, but what would you recommend? I'm all about those tangible tips. So if you're 40, if you're 45, even 39, you could be like me. I've got a 20 year old. Like I've felt all those feelings that a lot of 40 year olds feel. Yeah. Um, what do you recommend like your biggest tip to help you navigate these types of changes well first of all the number one thing is give yourself permission mm. and if you feel uncomfortable giving yourself permission then i the stranger on the interwebs hereby give you permission to take care of yourself yeah whatever that means however it looks for you you and if this is not about fill your own cup so that you can then do more for others right this is about just fill your cup mm -hmm. you're worth it just fill your cup so giving women permission to take good care of themselves you know at midlife we god willing have 30 40 50 more years in us mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. i don't want to be overweight in pain cranky sitting on my couch judging the little people for playing on the grass I, that's not the life i want right yeah. i yeah. want to be vibrant and happy and positive and making you know contributing up until they roll me into the hole right like but okay and that's that's what i want but what i'm saying is if you've got decades in front of you then you deserve to feel good in your body and you deserve to feel good about yourself and i much prefer that over being in pain and unhappy and living your entire life 
following someone else's prescription for you. Mm, True words. Could not have been said. Um, I love that. Y'all, if you didn't hear that tip, that tip was give yourself permission to boss up and be you, take care of you. No one else is going to do that. Self-care looks different for every single one of us. It's just what brings you joy and happiness. And if you're listening to today's show and you're going through maybe a midlife or this like, I don't even know what to do, right? Just, I would highly suggest going to Lisa's website, watching her masterclass, following her, right? If you have questions, reach out to her. Um, She is phenomenal. She knows what she's talking about when it comes to helping you navigate these big changes, helping you go from chaos to, you know, calm and clarity. Mm -hmm. I personally, if, if you're looking to lose weight, you know, feel energized, finally feel sexy, wear those clothes you haven't worn in a long time. Y'all know I am Carissa and I am a certified health, life and fitness coach. And I help women boss up on their physical health their mental health. And we, of course, talk self-care because that is a huge key to any success. So if whether you're going through midlife crisis and you need some help navigating or you're like, I can't stand the reflection in the mirror anymore. This is my wake up call. I love to help you as well. Um, So ladies, boss, babe, queens and mamas, I hope you enjoy today's boss up babe story tips and our expert advice. In case you missed any of today's episode, all you have to do is head over to iTunes, Spotify. You can, you know, stream it from your favorite platform. You will be able to re-listen, re-watch, take notes all you want. So Lisa, thank you so much for being on the Boss Up Babe show. I wish you so much success. I cannot wait to maybe bring you back uh, in the next season and continue to have this conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all stay thriving. Thank you for listening to the Boss Up Babe radio show with Carissa Adkins, bringing you tangible tips and expert coaching advice to help you boss up and get healthy. Tune in every second and fourth Tuesday at 1230 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com for interviews with industry leaders and powerhouse boss babes that will empower you to take action and live your best life. If you're ready to boss up and work with Carissa in one of her transformative group coaching programs, visit 365dailyhustle.com.